go unanswered. God alone created the concept of prayer because he wanted men to have access to his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I say that again. I want you to pay close attention to it now. God alone came up with the concept of prayer. God alone. Because he wanted men to have access to his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. This is why he said, call unto me, Ray, and I will answer you. And I will show you great and mighty things that thou knowest not. So when we look in the Bible, we find a pattern that when men call upon the name of the Lord honestly, God would not ignore them because he will not ignore his own word. Did you not know that God is bound by his word? He is a deity and when God says something, God would do it. So God is bound by his word. So since he came up himself with the concept of prayer, and so when we call upon him honestly, and in the right way, God really is obligated to answer our prayer. Do I have anybody that's going to pray with me today? Now, there are some people believe that God answers all of our prayers. But this belief is a fallacy. It's not true. Because if God answered all of our prayers, he would be in violation of his own words. Because there are some that are praying, there are some that are calling upon him who are in violation of kingdom laws, which will inhibit or keep God from responding to you irregardless to how important you think that your prayer is or your prayer is off. Do anybody here think that that prayer is important when they go to God? But don't you understand that God cannot answer all of our prayers because, number one, some of us, when we are praying to God, we are in violation of kingdom laws. And if God answered that prayer, he would be in violation of his own words. God want to help you. God want to help I. This is why he came up with the concept of prayer because he wanted me and you to have access to his wisdom. Not of an understanding. That's not the Bible say. If you, any of you lacks wisdom, let him call unto God and God will reveal it to him, but he must ask in faith. Because if you lack wisdom, 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 God's wisdom, God's wisdom extends beyond the boundaries of the earth. God can reveal some things to you that you think, of, why could I have a, why, why could I not figure that out? Because God there are some things that you won't get until you go to God. Right. We have not. Because we ask not. And when we ask, we ask amiss. And when you ask amiss, that means that you are asking in a wrong way. And when you approach God in a wrong way, then God is not obligated to answer that prayer. Now you may have you may have some people talking about yes God that's all prayers. I remember in the church that I was going to many years ago, Pam and I, after we got married, and there was a mother in the church who said that God answers all prayers. And I didn't know then as much as I know now. But I can I'm going to show you in the word that God don't no, answer all prayers because if He did, He would be in violation of His own words. And I'm going to show you. In scripture, some things 
that we do that inhibits or keep God from answering your prayer? Do I have a witness in the one? Yeah. Now, what is a violation of kingdom laws regarding prayer? What is a violation of kingdom laws regarding prayer? This means that you are trying to approach God in a way that he has not specified in his word. In other words, if I want my prayers answered, it is my responsibility to find out what laws govern prayer. And I am to set myself in agreement with those laws so that when I pray according to God's will, I can go to him as bold as a lion and be persistent, stand my ground, and God is obligated then to answer my prayer. Are you listening to me? There are laws that govern prayers. Have you not heard that the commandments, the law, principles, and precepts of God, but we just look right over them, Laws, precepts, principles, commandments, all of this is in the kingdom of God. But when we are in violation of kingdom laws, that means that I'm trying to approach this holy God in a wrong way. But my responsibility as a believer and as a child of God to find out what laws Govern prayer. And I am to set myself in agreement with those laws. And if I would do that, then I can go to God bold out of the lion. And God will answer my prayer. Did not God say, Come unto me bold? Come to the throne of God bold? That you might obtain mercy and find grace to help in the time of need. God said, Come bold. But I can't come bold, Lillian. If I don't understand the law that governs prayer. See, some people tiptoe into the kingdom of God, but yet they got a right to be there. Why would one tiptoe and not be sure when they go into the presence of God? You ought to be sure that what you are asking God is not wrong for you to have. Amen. You can find that out from his word, and God's word is real, God's will is his word. So then, I don't have to ease in. I don't have to tiptoe into the presence of God. See, first of all, because I have been bought and paid for by the blood of Jesus Christ, I can go into the presence of God bold because I understand that I'm supposed to be there. And as long as I'm there according to his will and his word, I can be bold as a lion and say, Lord, you said that this belongs to me as a child of God. Do I have a witness in the one? For instance, is it right to pray woman for a man? Is it right man to pray for a woman? Is it right? So then if you want, if you don't know, you ought to search the scripture and find out when someone actually prayed for a man or prayed for a woman. And then you can carry that to God and pray and say, Lord, if you did it for him, you can do it for me. And Lord, I'm willing to stand my ground until my change comes. Now listen to me. You can't be having no spare time while you're waiting on God. Well, I'm going to hold on to her until God sent me her. I'm going to hold on to him until God sent me him. See, first of all, that ain't right. See, first of all, God wants you to be stripped. God wants you to get rid of everything that's going to cause problems when he sent the right woman. So, there is nothing wrong with telling Sally, well, Sally, you know, like this relationship that we've had, you know, I'm, I'm believing that God is going to send me the right person. So I just want to, in a very nice way, end this relationship. You go your way, 
I go mine. Now, if I happen to see you somewhere with someone, I'm going to say, hey, how you doing? But I'm waiting for God Amen. to honor my prayer. And see the fact that might say God will test you, God will try you, but God already knows what's in you. But God will, will try you to show you what's in you. Right. God already knows what's in you. Right. Mm. God will allow you to, to, to go long enough to show you that you ain't nothing but a lot of talk. <laughs> you say one thing, but you do something else. Yeah. God wants you to get to the place yes. where you say and do. Right. You do what you say and you say what you do. Right. Do I have a witness? Yeah. So then that when, when, when you are praying about something, I want to pray about something that you are not sure. You need to go to the word and find out what God law is on this. What, 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 what law govern prayer. You can't go to God and unbelief and expect God to answer your prayer. Are you, are you listening to me? Now, there are certain things that come out of your mouth after you pray that will kill a prayer of faith. Amen. Let me say it again. Because God, children, my people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. There are something you say, something that comes out of your mouth that can actually kill a prayer of faith. Words. Death and life is in the power of your tongue. It didn't say anything about death and life within the power of God's tongue. I mean, like, God just speaks words and things happen. Right. But see, what you don't realize that because you said it and didn't anything happen right then, you think that I got away with it. But no, right. you didn't get away with it. Right. Well, it's going to happen, you keep running your mouth. Yes. Yeah. See, a lot of people are broke because they keep talking broke. Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to ever have anything. Everybody seems to be getting blessed with me. Why don't I have anything? How come I can't ever seem to get over? Now let me ask you a question. Do you want God to keep you from ever getting over? Do you want God to keep you from being blessed? Do you want God to keep you broke? Well then, let me ask you this question. Why do you keep saying that? You hear the word of God to change your vocabulary. And when your vocabulary changes, that's your speech change. Amen. Why do my speech need to change? So that I can talk to God, so God can watch over his word that I'm Amen. talking to perform. Amen. Amen. Wow. And I'm gonna tell you something. After a while you do this long enough, it becomes automatic. Yes, it does. Can yes, I say it again? Does. You do this long enough. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes, indeed. It becomes automatic. Yes, indeed. Is that okay? A lie of lies because it's automatic. Right. Right. Come on. Yeah. A person is lazy because it actually comes automatic. Okay. They've been lazy for long, so long, hey, it just comes automatic. Right. See, you can walk with God and keep God's commandment long enough, it actually becomes automatic. I mean, you get up. You don't have to be trying to make yourself do it. You just want to do it because you want to please God. Amen. Amen. You want to please Him because you have extreme adoration for him. Yes. I reverence him. I adore him. I love him. Why? Because he paid my spirit, soul, and my body, and he came up with the concept of prayer, and he said, call me, and I will answer you. So if I line my speech up with him, it won't be long before I got my petition that I have desired from him. Yes. But now, when you come to God bold as a lion, and when you know that you are in his will, as far as what you're asking, you can be persistent. Let's look at Luke the 11th chapter. <clears throat> Let's look at Luke the 11th chapter. When you get to Luke the 11th chapter, I want you to say amen. Look, you love her. And let's go down to the fifth verse. Amen. Amen. I'll be there in just a minute. Amen. Okay, I'm there now. Look, the fifth chapter, the eleventh chapter, the first. And he said unto them, Which of you shall have a friend and shall go unto him at midnight and say unto him, Friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine in his journey has come to me, 
and I have nothing to set before him. And he from within shall answer and say, Trouble me not. The door is now shut, and my children are with me in bed. I cannot rise and give thee. And I say unto you, Though he will not rise and give him because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him as many as he need. In the King James Version, that word importunity, that word means persist. In other words, this man had come to his friend's house. He had come, you know, on a long journey. And uh, he uh, wanted to set something. A friend had come to his house, you know, from a long journey. And he didn't have anything to set for him. So he went to his friend to ask for some bread. And the man told him, said, well, you know, me and my family, we're in the bed. You know, that trouble me not. But the man was persistent. He was persistent. He was persistent. In other words, the man outside the door knew that the man in the house that was in the bed with his family, he knew that he had what he needed. So he wasn't going to leave until he got what he wanted. So his opportunity was that he kept banging on the door. Man, get up! Get up! Get up! Give me some bread, man, get up! And the man inside got tired and he got up and gave him everything that he needed. So here is what I'm saying. When you know you're right, when you know what belongs to you, you can go to God and be persistent. In other words, you ask, you seek, and you knock. That's being persistent. Now listen to me, Paulette. There are some prayers that is going to take longer to be answered. There is something that God is not going to just answer overnight. But yet and still, you know, for in fact, from the word, that I'm going to and approach God according to his will and according to his word. So I'm going to stand my ground until my change come. How long are you willing to wait? I'm willing to wait until my change come. And you remember I told you about, you know, you're the proper for a man to ask God for a wife, and is it proper for a woman to ask God for a husband or whatever? Yes, it's proper. So when I found it in the Word of God, I read it to God from the Word, the Bible. I read it from the Bible to God and said this when I closed the Bible. I'm going to stand and wait until my woman come. I waited. Now that crowd wasn't after overnight. That prayer was not answered overnight. It took a while. But God honored me because I went to him in prayer. And he honored me because I got rid of everything that would cause trouble once God brought that woman into my life. He did it. It didn't happen overnight. It took a while. But I stood my ground because I knew that I had approached God according to his will. And God's will is found in his word, but we have to take God off of that timetable that we have God on. In other words, if I don't hear from God in a week, I'm giving up. If I don't hear from God in a month, I'm giving up. If I don't hear from God in a year, I'm, I'm giving up. See, first of all, when you have God's will, you won't do that because you know that God is obligated to answer you, especially when you know that you are right in the sight of God. Are you praying with me? So I asked a question before I started ministry. Do we have anybody here that have prayed and you knew that your prayer was in order, but God has not answered the prayer? I'm going to share some things with you that can inhibit God from answering your prayer. Now, watch this. When I prayed for the woman, talking about pain, it was God's will. But did you not know from the time that I prayed and said amen until the time Pam and I walked down the aisle and got married, I could have messed that up. In other words, I could have gotten into violation of kingdom laws. In other words, yes, I'm waiting for Pam, but I'm going to have me a little farm for God's sake. Are you listening to me? Yeah. 
violation of kingdom laws. Hmm? Backslide. I mean, that you know, a lot of things I, I can I can get off into violating God's law, and guess what? It wasn't God that withheld the answer to my prayer. It was I getting into a violation of kingdom law that caused my prayer not to be answered. See, but when you pray according to God's will, the prayer is already answered. It's just a matter of amen, and there it is. But it's a lot of things that you have to do between amen, and there it is. Now, do you know what I mean when I talk about amen, and there it is? When you pray, at the end of your prayer, you say what? Amen. But you don't have what you need when you say amen. Right. So there is a time period from amen until I have this tangible evidence. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people get messed up mm -hmm. between amen <laughs> and here it is. Just because you prayed according to God's will, do you think the devil just going to back off? No. Just say, he prayed and said amen. I'm on. Yeah, I got to get out of his way. Right. No. He gonna bring the best sound you ever seen. Oh, he gonna bring the best salad you ever seen. And see, if you're not grinding rooted in God, you gonna say, "Wait a minute, you know that side for just a little bit." God understand? No, God don't understand. Because see, once you involve Him, I mean, God is gonna do things right. Let's look at another scripture. Let's look at Luke 18. We're talking about once you know that you're praying according to the will of God, you can be persistent. Luke 18, and start with the first verse. I love to read this because it gives you a good picture of uh, being persistent. In Luke 18, chapter, starting with the first verse. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not faint or not give up or lose heart. Notice the second verse. Saying, that was in a city a judge who feared not God, neither God in man. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while. But afterwards, he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard man, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her this by her continual coming. She weary me. Do you see that? Yeah. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, and shall not God avenge and avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear along with them? Have you heard me say this before? That woman wasn't, wasn't going to give up. The old judge that she was going to said, But I don't feel God, I don't, I don't feel God, not do I respect any man. He said, but this woman getting on my nerves. <laughs> she keep coming to me. So in order to keep her from getting on my nerves, I'm going to give her exactly what she wants. But notice Jesus said, and Jesus is the one that's speaking in the parable. Jesus said, now do you see what this unjust judge did? He even rendered unto this woman what she was coming to him for. So well, how much more will God do for them that are walking upright and doing what's right in his sight? The unjust judge, now God is not unjust. God is a righteous judge. Amen. So then, because I understand my rights, I understand God's laws, I understand his principles and precepts, all I got to do is line my life up with him and find out the law that governs prayer and act accordingly. And once I have prayed and said amen, I must continue to do what's right in his sight until I can say I have what I have prayed unto God for. We have been blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Yeah. But if you look at that, and you look at yourself, you will say, that verse can't be true. Mm -hmm. But if I was blessed with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that means that I would already be blessed according to the word you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. See, the fact of the matter is one thing that you don't understand. The, the heavenly places 
It's not exactly where you are, but God has given you something to extract out of the heavenly places and to the natural place where you live. Amen. But what another thing you don't understand is that the devil, y'all listen to me very carefully now. Amen. The devil is standing between mm -hmm. the heavenly places and you. And he understands the principles and precepts better than us. Yes, yes, he does. My people are destroyed for the lack of knowledge. So the devil, he's standing right here, and he knows that the faith that you have in God is the only thing that will extract the blessing that God has laid up in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. He knows that faith is the only thing that can call that to bypass him and get to you. But when you don't know that, not only will he hold them up, he'll stop them. See, it's one thing to hold them up, but it's an entirely different thing to stop them. See, a lot of our blessings have been held up. See, but eventually you get it. But see, sometimes you, you, you get so far off from God, not only will he hold them up, he's going to stop it. And you find believers ought to be living blessed, but find out that they're living beneath their privileges as a child of God because they never took the time to understand the laws that govern prayer. Amen. You got to walk upright. Yes, you, you can't be lying, cheating, and tipping and slipping and doing all that stuff right. and think that God's going to be answering all your prayers. It doesn't work that way. Right. So, he said that, the verse says, you have been blessed with all spiritual blessings and have the place in Christ Jesus. That's past tense. You have been blessed. God actually see you blessed. See, you blessed because you are alive and ain't dead. You blessed because you are not laid up in the same bed. You blessed. See, but God wants you to get beyond that. Amen. Amen. So, when you look at the word blessed, B L E S S E D, blessed, you're, you're blessed as past tense. But, the heavenly place is not exactly where you are. Here they are, the blessings. Here the devil is. And here you are. Those blessings, some kind of way, got to get from heavenly places by the devil to you. But if you don't know how, if you don't know how to use your faith and line your prayer life up with God, a lot of things that belong to you won't ever get to you because you keep letting the devil steal it. Doesn't the Bible say that the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy? Yes. It says that Jesus came that we might have life and have life abundantly. Yes. So as a matter of fact, when you enter the family of God, when you enter the family of God, you become entitled to. Amen. You become entitled to. My father was named Samuel Reese. My mother was named Ruby Reese, my daddy. He was, he was about 26 years old when I was born. My mother was 20. And when I was born into the Reese family, I became entitled to what belonged to Samus and Ruby because I was in the family. Would you agree with that? Yes. When you were born again in Christ, you became entitled because you are not in the family of God. And God has set things in place and in motion for you and tell you this is how you get it. Amen. Because I have called men, ordained and appointed them to teach you how to get things that you don't quite understand yet. Can I, can I, can I share this with you? Yes. You don't stumble up on the knowledge of God. Right. You don't stumble up on the knowledge of God. You on purpose get this. Amen. 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 When I start talking about like the functions of the Holy Spirit, the gifts of the Holy Spirit and what have you, praise and all of this and what have you, and, and words and what have you, this is something that you don't stumble upon. And see, a lot of people are living beneath their privileges because they won't allow a man that's been anointed and appointed by God to teach them. They won't show up to church long enough. And now they are living beneath their privileges and mad and envious and jealous as somebody else who's being blessed. And the devil is laughing at you and saying, well, as long as they keep on the path that they're on, I'm going to keep them picking crumbs when they ought to, be, when they ought to understand that they 
have been adopted into the family of God and they are entitled to. Entitled. You have become a new creation in Christ. Old things have passed away. The whole things are, have become new. You are entitled. Yes, I am. Did you know? Yes, I am. Thank you. When, you, when you read in, in, in Romans the 8th chapter, and some of the things when you read and you look at it and look at yourself, you will say that like, this cannot be possible because you're trying to understand it with that old vocabulary because the vocabulary that you have, you have never taken the time to change it. Did you not know that the word of God says in Romans the 8th chapter that you have become an heir of God and the journey out with Jesus Christ? All right. In other words, Jesus died for you to come up out of that sorry, stupid, and ridiculous situation that you're in. Mm. All right. But since you like it, he's not going to force you out of it. Mm. If you like eating out of mud, then God will let you eat out of mud. But if you like eating on, on good, nice china, God will have you eat, eat off good, nice china. Yes, he will. Yes, he will. Hmm? If you like <laughs> eating out of the trash can, God will let you eat out of the trash can. Uh -huh. Now, if you like that, <laughs> Adam, Adam Christ was supposed to be doing that. No. Read, read the entire chapter of Romans 8 when you get home. You are an heir of God and journey after Christ. So what belonged to Christ actually belonged to you. And Christ called us brother. Mm -hmm. He watches over us. He directs our steps. And he gave us prayer. Because he wants to have access to his wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. You have not the wisdom of God because you never asked for it. You always run and try to, I'm going to do it myself. Yeah, you're always falling on your behind. I remember prior to getting married, you know, uh, after I had prayed and, and the Lord revealed to me that Pam was going to be my wife, you know, I had a friend that had, he was laughing, said, you didn't get to first base with her, did you? I just kind of smiled and laughed and what have you. Mm -hmm. See, because he didn't know all what was going on with me and my God through prayer. So he was laughing, and uh, I remember talking with him and, and some, some more friends of mine, and telling them that, yes, uh, you have a young lady that I met, and what have you. And, uh, and he said, he said, what you gonna do? Say that you know that God don't want you to have her, and they started laughing. I said, no, God don't want me to be with her. God has shown me who he want me to be with, and I waited. And 34 years later, we still got yeah. See, what God said is for help. Whatever God said is forever. Yes, yes. This is why the Lord said that, you know, that uh, whatsoever God has drawn together, let no man settle something. Yeah. Right. So when God put it together, you better stay by yourself. Yes. If you walk away from him or her, you better stay by yourself. Yes. Unless it's physical abuse, abandonment, or fornication. Anything else, you better stay with it. You can't be talking about, I'm tired of him, I'm tired of, no. You ask God, he gave it to you, you waited, and you're going to stick it out. <laughs> I feel sorry for, <laughs> let me say this. The Apostle Paul said that you're going to have some trouble in this. Why would you have trouble with somebody that God has given you? Because you got a devil in here that don't like marriage. Yes. Amen. Amen. <laughs> Is anybody praying? Yes. Am I helping anybody? Yes. Well, I done found, you know, my soul right here. Mm -hmm. Check with me in 10 years. <laughs> we we, we going to have a talk then. Mm -hmm. See, there's something that you got to work at. Yes. It just don't happen. You got to work at this. There was something you got to keep in your mouth. Amen. Oh, amen. <laughs> if you want your home to be okay. Amen. Am I right? Yes, Some of y'all don't know what I'm talking about. <laughs> Now listen, as a student of God, as a student of God's word, I have found four significant things that if you violate them, it will inhibit God from answering your prayer. Number one is unbelief. Number one is unbelief. Unbelief reveals itself in prayer. When you have prayed a prayer by faith, 
And then you turn around and say, I don't know if God is going to answer that prayer. I'm just, I pray now I'm hoping and wishing that God is going to answer this prayer. That is unbelief 101. In other words, with your mouth, you declare openly, after you have prayed according to the will of God, I don't know whether or not God is going to answer me. I'm just going to hope and wish. And some people might say, well, Pastor Richard, you're getting kind of technical on this. No, I want to get technical on, on this because I want you to understand that there are laws that govern prayer. Yes. Yes. Keep your mouth shut even though what, what, what you have prayed for and it's the will of God, even though it say like that, you may not ever have to keep your mouth shut. Shh, 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 shh. Keep your mouth Amen. shut. Amen. Keep your mouth shut because your mouth can kill a prayer. Unbelief is number one. Notice in Mark the 11th chapter, 24 verse, the Bible says, What things shall you desire when you pray? Believe that you receive it, and you shall have it. What's significant about that verse? See, first of all, you pray, and you got to believe it before you ever get it. So when you talk in nonsense, right after you pray, it'll never happen. What things are you desire when you pray, believe that you receive it? And you shall have it. You got to believe it. In other words, you got to talk like it's there. I was, I mean, I was telling people that I was going to take Pam to Alabama before I ever said anything about taking her to Alabama. We went. Did everything go right down there? No, not exactly, but we still together. That was something that we had to work out. I mean, like I was talking as if it was so. Amen. I had so much, much belief in God that was God revealed to me that this is what I'm going to do. I started to talk it. Mm -hmm. The Bible says in John 15 and 7, if you abide in me and my word abide in you, you can ask what you will and it shall be done for you. What's significant about that? You have the word of God, right? Mm -hmm. So it's saying that if you abide in the word, and you allow the word to abide in you, then you can ask what you will and it shall be done. Notice it's all centered around the word. You have to allow the word to abide. And once you allow the word to abide, then you have the confidence to be able to ask the Lord, the Lord something according to his will, and it said that it shall be done for you. Is that okay? Now, number two, unrepentant sin. Number two is unrepentant sin. The refusal to repent of a known sin that you have committed, especially one that God has spoken to you about, this is a significant violation. Unrepentant sin. Now, there are some people that believe that you don't have to repent of sin anymore. The Bible talks about if you have sinned, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. Now, let, 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 me, let me share this with you. When you got saved, you didn't, you, God didn't ask you to confess sin. When you got saved, God did not ask us to confess sin because you could not have remembered all the sin that you committed from the, from the time of, of accountability to the time that you are now that you've gotten saved. God don't ask you to confess sin. But what he does ask you is to confess Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. You see the difference? So you are asking Jesus and confessing him as your Lord and Savior and asking him to come into your heart and be Lord and Savior of your life. And by virtue of him coming on the inside of you, you are then forgiven of every sin that you have ever committed. The slate is wiped clean. In other words, now you are a new creation. 
Old things have passed. And behold, now I'm on a new path. But now, in, in, in 1 John 1 and 9, it calls you into question. It said that after you have confessed Jesus as Lord, okay, it said that if, you, if any man sing it, okay, God is faithful and just to forgive you of your sin and cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So in other words, I can fall into sin, okay, and when I fall into sin and God brings it to my attention and I refuse to do anything with it, that is a violation of kingdom laws. And God won't answer my prayer because I'm in unconfessed sin. Have you ever did something to someone or been in the situation that you knew you were wrong? Hmm? And God will bring it to your attention? You got to get straight from that. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to say this about Pam now. I'm gonna say this. I've talked uh, before about this. When, when Pam was following this woman around in that parking lot, in that Mustang. Okay, kind of bad. You know, somebody could have bagged up and I mean, like a mess could happen. And what have you. And, and, and when the law over, Pam standing up in front of my mouth. And the Lord spoke unto her and said, what are you doing? What are you doing? In other words, the Lord is saying that what you have done was wrong. Now I want you to come clean with me. See, now, now, did Pam have to come clean? No, she didn't. I mean, it'll bother you for a little while that I've done this wrong. It'll bother you for a little while, but after a while, you get override. See, but the sin is still there. And there you are praying. This prayer that seems so important to you and you're not receiving any answers from it, have it ever occurred to you that I could be, you know, in an area of sin that I haven't, I haven't uh, asked God to forgive me for? Yes, you're going to fall short. Now, the fact of the matter is, all of it has been paid for. See, but he would not say that if any man is sin, you know, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you of all unrighteousness, but you've got to ask him. Just as you asked him to come into your heart and be Lord and Savior of your life, you started on a new, you started on a new life that day. Old things passed away, old all things have become new. But now, he said that from this day forward, okay, if you fall into something and not bring it to your attention, I want you to come clean with me. He's faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. So that when I do come to him and pray, he won't ignore me, but answer my prayer. I'm talking about number one, unbelief. Number two, unrepentant sin. And number three, is transgression. Transgression, oh, let, me, let, me, let me read something for you. I want, I want to show this to you. Let's look at Psalm, you can turn if you want to, if you don't want to, you don't have to. That's Psalm 66. Psalm 66, starting with the 17th verse. Uh, now, in Psalms, the 66 number of the Psalm and the, the 17th verse, notice what it says. I cried unto him with my whole mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. Notice in the 18th verse, I want you to notice it carefully now. If I regard the Iniquity of singing in my heart. The Lord will not hear me. But verily God has heard me. He has attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. You mean to tell me God can turn a deaf ear to your prayer? Mm. Notice, let me read it again in the, in the 18th uh, verse in the uh, 67 numbers of Psalms. Of the 66 number of songs. If I regard iniquity in my heart, in other words, you know that is there. God has brought it to your attention. You have ignored him, and now you're praying, and God said that I hear you, but I can't answer you. Because you're in violation of kingdom law. There are laws, kingdom laws, that governs prayer. 
So I have, it is my responsibility to find out what these laws are and, and align my life up with them so that I can go to God for You see? So sometimes you have done something and, and God has brought it to your attention. And something that's still been, been a year ago. You know, it bothered you at first. But the more and more time passed, it became a distant memory. But yet and still, God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. A thousand years is like one day to God, and one, one day is like a thousand years. A thousand years is like one day to God. You see? So it's still fresh in God's mind, but you don't just about forgot it. And God is saying that I can't do that for you because. And God, and you'll go to God and say, Lord, I prayed to you and I saw your face, and all of a sudden it comes to your mind what you did. Now, you, you just didn't think about that. You might think, that, why am I thinking about that? The Holy Spirit is bringing it back to your memory. Because you're seeking the Father, who is the God of love. He wants to answer your prayer, but he can't. And God will reveal to you, this is what I have against you. And I want you to clean it up. And once you clean it up, then God can answer the prayer. I'm talking about unbelief, unrepentant sin, and transgressions. Now transgression is what it means being in a backslidden state. For Proverbs 13 and 15 says, the way of a transgressor is hard. Why is it hard, Kim, the life of a transgressor? You have positioned yourself against God, and now God can't answer your prayer. I know we hear people talk about the way of a transgressor is hard. That means that you are transgressing, transgressing and in violation of kingdom laws. So you have actually positioned yourself against God. And God is wanting to answer, but God can't because of this backslidden state that you're in. Backslidden. So if you're looking at me, if I'm walking far with God, does that mean that I'm in a backslidden state if I'm walking with God? A backslidden state means that I come to a standstill. I'm at a point where I'm getting ready to make a decision. Either keep walking with God or start to bag back. Have you ever noticed anybody that get away from church, stay away from church for like I'm talking about months on, years, and whatever? I don't know what makes them think that they come back and they're in the same place they were when they left. What you don't understand, and it's hard to tell people this, and that's why I don't, your mind has been played with. Mm -hmm. All right. yes, yes. You did what you did to get away from God because you were influenced by seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil. They are the things, beings, that cause you to backslide and you're in a backslidden state, and things that worked for you yesterday no longer work for you now because you're in a backslidden state. It was you that put the wedge between you and God because you listened to seducing spirits and doctrines of the devil, and here you are praying. And, and, and after people come back to church after a long sabbatical, they think that they can jump right back to where they were. No, your mind has been played with and tainted. When people backslide, that means, I mean that your looks don't change. But your behavior changes. What comes out of your mouth changes. How you see circumstances and situation changes. Things change and it's so subtle, you don't even recognize it. The Bible said, Faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It does not say anything about faith come by having heard. So if you heard it, obviously it didn't do any good because you are backsliding. So faith coming by hearing, in other words, it come by prevalent tense. You have to continue to hear it over and over and over again. That's what keeps you on the straight and narrow. If you stop, and just like I said on a couple of Sundays ago, we went out of church from the second Sunday of March until the first Sunday of October. 
It affected some of the people in this church. Yes, it, it affected them. Yes, it, it affected them. Why? Because they got, they got out of the routine of going to church. And, and the fact of the matter is, now, they feel that we can just watch Pastor Reese on YouTube and get just as much. See, but that wasn't what you were doing before we left the church because of COVID-19. Amen. God won't, when things return back to normal, he wants you to get and give with that. Amen. Amen. Are you listening to me? And so, they think, okay, I go back and I'm, I'm where I used to be. But no, you're not. You done changed. Mm -hmm. You done changed. And it's hard to admit, it's hard to admit that I'm praying and not receiving an answer to my prayer. That's, that's hard to admit. See, number one, you've got to admit that there must be some fault somewhere. Mm -hmm. Because they don't just blaming God. Right. God don't ever answer my prayer. Wait a minute now, wait a minute now, wait a minute, wait a minute. God came up with the concept of prayer. He said, if you call me, I'll answer you. So then, if God came up with it, that means that God wants you to be have have a, have a, actually his wisdom, not an understanding, but you ain't getting it because there is some 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 violations mm -hmm. that you don't want to deal with. Unbelief. Have you ever heard anybody? I'm just praying and hoping. You know how to do everything else. Now we we gonna pray. Mm -hmm. I, I, what, what kind of thing is that? Right. Proud of being the first thing. Proud of being the first thing. Unbelief. Okay. Unrepentant sin. Backslidden state. Okay. Person that's in a backslidden state. The Bible says the way of a transgressor is hard. You're in a backslidden state. Okay. You have placed the ways between you and God. And, and these things are done so subtle until people don't recognize. Mm -hmm. right. And I know that I'm, I'm saying something today that you're probably thinking about. It. There ain't nothing wrong with, wrong, wrong with going to God. And you know, like, your tongue got out of, out of line today. You know it worked? You thought something negative about this person? See, first of all, by you thinking something negative about the person, they ain't hurting that person. It's hurting you. Amen. See, when you, when you let your tongue loose, and you go home and say, yeah, I, 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 I gave a piece of my mind. <laughs> See, but first of all, it, it's hurting you more than anybody. Amen. There is nothing wrong with when you allow your tongue to get out of order to go home and say, Father, would you please forgive the while it's on your mind? See, because you're going to walk off and forget about it. That's just human nature. Father, would you please forgive me? And let's, let's get honest. Lord, I lied to that woman. <laughs> I mean, like, move the white lie out of the way. You lied. I mean, like, you know, just, just tell God, Lord, I lied. I knew it hurt. Oh. You don't want to say it, but God already knows. <laughs> Look at the Bible, you'll find the word lie. Mm -hmm. So when you, when, you, when you get it straight with God and say, Now, Father, and He said that I will, I will cleanse you of all unrighteousness. I will cast your sin, you know, into the sea of forgetfulness. In other words, if you don't remember it, I won't remember it easily. Last and not least, last and the last one. Number four, praying contrary to God's will. Whatever you are petitioning God for, it has to be in accordance with his word. His will is his word, and his will is found in the Bible, which is God's word. Notice I quote this to you. 1 John 5, 14 and 15. This is the confidence that we have in him. That if we ask anything according to his will, he will hear us. If we know that he has heard us, then we have the petition that we have desired from him. Notice it said that this is the confidence that we have. I have confidence because I'm asking him about something according to his will. And when I ask him, Yolanda, according to his will, I now have an audience with God. In other words, God, I got his attention that God is listening because God is not going to deny himself. Right. Amen. See, when you say, Lord, you say it. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. He's not going to deny that. But guess what now? When you end the prayer, you end the prayer with amen, don't you? Mm -hmm. 
You're in the power of amen, don't you? But there was a period of time from amen to there it is. In other words, I got to walk up right. In other words, we're talking about healing also. We're talking about healing also. When, when hands are laid on you, when prayer is prayed, did you not know that there was a such thing as a miracle? And there was a such thing as a healing process. So when hands are laid on a person by that has the anointing, you know, keep your mouth shut. You may not feel nothing in your legs, in your back, in your head, in your hand, in your eyes. You may not feel nothing, but who's to say that the process has not started yet? See, but you go home, that pastor prayed for me. I don't feel nothing. Cancellation of prayer. And yes. you killed it. And the Holy Ghost is not going to stop by and say that you killed it. You find this out on Sunday morning. When the prayer of faith is prayed, you go say, well, if the prayer of faith is prayed, I'm going to stand my ground. Amen. I'm going to be bold as a lion. I know the man prayed for me because he didn't got results. So I went to him in faith and had him to lay his hands on me to pray for him. So Father, thank you that a healing process has taken place in my body. Hold your ground. And you have been blessed. With all spiritual blessings in heavenly place in Christ Jesus, here the day I believe. And here you are right here. My faith extracts that what's in the, in the, in the, in the uh, heavenly places. It's coming, it's coming, it's coming. And what I say and what I do causes it to bypass the enemy. Yes, and I can say, here it is. Yes, Lord. Give the Lord a hand, somebody. Yes. Anybody understand what I'm saying? Yes. 